In today's video, we'll look at a shocking case that occurred in Spain in 2012. This is a heartbreaking story about a father-in-law's complicated relationship with his daughter-in-law. Join us as we uncover the family's dark secrets, deception, and the cost of committing crimes. Prepare for a dramatic and unpredictable journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next exciting video. Now let's get started. Marcos, 51, was born in Spain on May 3, 1961, and has had a turbulent life. Marcos raised his two children, Enrique and Eva, on his own after his wife died early. The family lives in an old house in San Lorenzo de El Escorio, a quiet town on the outskirts of Madrid. The community respects Marcos, who appears to be a model and a respected father. However, behind the house's closed doors, Marcos reveals a darker side to his personality. Loneliness and unfulfilled desires have transformed him into a calculating and dangerous individual. His two children, Enrique and Eva, were born and raised in the quiet town of San Lorenzo de El Escorio, on the outskirts of Madrid, Spain. Their old house sits on a small road, surrounded by majestic nature and green pine forests. This is where they spent their unforgettable childhood years. Enrique, the eldest son, has always demonstrated maturity and responsibility since childhood. His parents frequently delegate responsibility for his younger sister, EVA. Marcos, Enrique's father, always encouraged him in his studies and wanted him to be a strong, trustworthy man. Enrique often accompanied his father on walks through the woods, where he told him stories about life and the responsibilities of a man in the family. These lessons from his father helped Enrique develop a calm yet ambitious personality in life. Enrique's childhood was not entirely peaceful. The unexpected death of his mother devastated the family. As the eldest son, Enrique had to take on more responsibilities at a young age, such as caring for his younger sister and supporting his father. Enrique matured earlier than his peers due to the loss and immense responsibility, but he also became more withdrawn and less open about his feelings. Eva, born three years after Enrique, is a lively, cheerful girl who brings joy to the entire family. Unlike her brother, EVA has received protection and care from her father and brother since childhood. Her mother, before her death, always made an effort to spend time with EVA, teaching her about kindness, gentleness, and how to love those around her. EVA was extremely attached to her mother, and her mother's death left a large void in her heart. After her mother died, EVA grew closer to her brother and father. She often went to Enrique for comfort and to express her sadness. Enrique became Eva's protector and closest friend. Despite living in a family of three, their love and bond remained strong. After finishing high school, EVA decided to study education at a university close to her home. She had always aspired to be a teacher, wishing to assist and educate the next generation. During her university years, Eva met Antonio, an enthusiastic architecture student. Antonio was a sweet, intelligent, and aspirational boy. Eva and Antonio's relationship began as a friendship and eventually evolved into love. They frequently walked together through the small streets of San Lorenzo de El Escorial, where EVA told Antonio about her childhood and wonderful memories. After graduation, Antonio got a job at a large architectural firm, where he proposed to EVA on a romantic evening. Eva agreed because she loved and trusted Antonio. They married in 2011, shortly after Enrique and Cristina's wedding. Eva and Antonio moved to a small town near San Lorenzo de El Escorial. Eva started her teaching career here, and Antonio worked for an architectural firm. Their marriage was initially very happy and both of them tried to keep in touch and care for their father from a distance. When her brother Enrique grew up, he aspired to build a better life for himself and his family, guided by his father's lessons and responsibilities. After finishing high school, Enrique decided to study business at a prestigious university in Madrid, 
With hard work and intelligence, he quickly established himself as an excellent student, earning the praise of many lecturers. After graduating from university, Enrique entered the business world with zeal and ambition. Because of his enthusiasm and natural leadership ability, he advanced quickly in his career and became a successful young entrepreneur. While browsing social networking sites, Enrique came across Cristina, a lovely girl with a bright smile. They began chatting via text messages, and Enrique was immediately captivated by Cristina's confidence and skillful way of speaking. Cristina, a young girl born in 1987, lacks a stable job but has an attractive appearance and a free lifestyle. She enjoys traveling, making new friends, and getting involved in social activities. Christina, despite not having a regular job, always finds ways to enjoy life in her own unique way. When she met Enrique, she was immediately impressed by his maturity and success. Their conversation progressed, and they both realized they shared many interests and perspectives on life. After a few weeks of chatting online, Enrique decided to meet Christina in person. They met in a small cafe in Madrid. When they first met, Christina's natural charm and beauty captivated Enrique. They both felt as if they had known each other for a long time, and the first date quickly led to many more. Their relationship progressed quickly. Despite his busy work schedule, Enrique always made time for Christina. They traveled to new places together and shared memorable experiences and their feelings for each other grew stronger over time. Enrique adored Cristina not only for her beauty, but also for how she made him feel at ease and happy. Cristina, despite not having a steady job, knew how to keep her life interesting. She gave Enrique a new perspective and a sense of adventure that he had never experienced before. However, Christina discovered in Enrique the stability and security she had always sought in a relationship. After only a few months of dating, Enrique realized Christina was the person he wanted to spend his future with. He decided to propose to Christina over a romantic dinner at a fancy restaurant in Madrid. Christina was surprised and delighted when Enrique got down on one knee and proposed, and she accepted without hesitation. In 2010, family and close friends attended their simple yet intimate wedding. Christina married Enrique, who moved into an old house in San Lorenzo de El Escorio with his father. Although Christina didn't have a regular job, Enrique always looked after her, hoping that their marriage would be enjoyable and fulfilling. He expected her to assist him in caring for his father, but he had no idea that this would be his biggest mistake. Despite not having a stable job, Christina spent a lot of time at home, caring for her family and enjoying her marriage. However, not having children after two years of marriage made her feel pressured, especially since Enrique frequently traveled on business trips. Enrique's business trips became more frequent, lasting anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, leaving Christina at home alone with her father-in-law, Marcos. Although Enrique always tried to stay in touch and care for his wife from a distance, his absence strained the marriage. Christina became lonely and lost in the large house, where her father-in-law, Marcos, began to show suspicious concern and attention to her. Marcos's words and actions evolved from normal concern to meaningful words and lustful eyes towards her. Christina was initially uncomfortable, but she did not dare to speak up because she was afraid Enrique would not believe her or blame her for her negative thoughts. She chose to remain silent, endure, and hoped that the situation would change as Enrique returned home more frequently. However, Enrique's repeated business trips increased Cristina's loneliness and insecurity, while also providing opportunities for Marcos to carry out his dark intentions. The relationship between the father-in-law and daughter-in-law grew increasingly complicated and tense, paving the way for a tragedy no one could have predicted. After Enrique had to leave for another business trip, Christina prepared a simple dinner for herself and Marcos. That evening, Marcos paid special attention to Christina, constantly complimenting her beauty and culinary abilities. Christina was uncomfortable, but she tried to remain calm so as not to disrupt the atmosphere. Marcos suggested a glass of wine to unwind after dinner. Christina reluctantly agreed, unwilling to offend him. 
While Christina was cleaning the table, Marcos quietly took out a bottle of sleeping pills he had prepared ahead of time. Taking advantage of Christina's absence, he quickly placed the drug in her glass of wine. When Christina returned, Marco smiled and handed her the glass of wine, trying to appear as normal as possible. Christina drank the wine before realizing she had taken a drug. Christina became dizzy within a few minutes. Her head became heavy, and her body was exhausted and out of control. She didn't understand what was going on and attempted to stand up, but her limbs were limp and unable to move. After a few days, Christina realized Marcos was leading her into the bedroom. Everything around her blurred, and she panicked, but her body couldn't respond. Marcos had waited a long time for this opportunity. When Christina was completely powerless to resist, he began to commit the depraved acts he had wished for, forcefully and brutally. Christina, in a semi-conscious state, could only feel the pain and humiliation. Marcos took full advantage of her vulnerability, humiliating her cruelly. Marcos continued his dark act even after he had achieved his goal. He removed his phone and took sensitive photos of Christina in undress, intending to use them to blackmail her later. He used the photos to control Christina and continue abusing her, making her a helpless victim in his sadistic game. Christina awoke the next morning in pain, both physically and mentally. She recognized the horror of what had occurred but did not dare tell anyone. She felt a wave of humiliation and fear as she realized she had no escape from her predicament. Marcos repeatedly threatened Christina, saying that if she told Enrique or anyone else, he would reveal the photos he had taken. Fearing that Enrique would abandon her if he discovered the truth, Christina remained silent and endured Marcos's threats and abuse. He imprisoned her in a house that should have been her home, transforming her into his prey. After the first time Marcos took advantage of Christina, he was constantly looking for new ways to commit his depraved acts. Marcos used the sensitive photos he had taken to blackmail Christina, forcing her to comply with his every request. Regardless of time or place, Marcos wielded his dark axe in the house whenever Enrique was away. Christina lived in constant fear. She had to be vigilant whenever Enrique was not present, but no matter how careful she was, she could not avoid Marcos's threats and abuse. Marcos would appear behind her when she was doing housework, such as cleaning or mopping. He forced her to stop, dragged her into a hidden corner of the house, and began to commit depraved acts. Christina wanted to resist, but she was so afraid and humiliated that she could only obey helplessly. Marcos did not spare Christina, even as she cooked in the kitchen. He frequently waited for her to concentrate on cooking before quietly approaching her and touching her inappropriately. If Christina resisted, he threatened to send Enrique sensitive photographs. Panic and helplessness forced Christina to stop cooking, allowing Marcos to humiliate her exactly where she should have felt safest. Christina no longer found dinner to be a peaceful experience, a time for family gatherings. When Enrique was not home, Marcos frequently forced her to sit with him at dinner. In the middle of the meal, he did not hesitate to use provocative language, making her feel embarrassed and afraid. If Christina expressed dissatisfaction or resistance, he would quickly shift from words to actions, requesting that she follow him to the bedroom or some hidden corner of the house to satisfy his depraved behavior. Even worse, there were nights when Marcos did more than simply sneak around. Though Christina and Enrique were supposed to share their bedroom, he entered it. When Enrique was not present, Christina had to put up with Marcos's intrusions into her room at night. He forced her to do terrible things in the bed she and Enrique usually shared. Christina felt stripped of her freedom and dignity as Marcos took her safest place, her bedroom. Christina couldn't get away from this terror. Every time Enrique went to work or on a business trip, she feared Marcos would return and take advantage of her at any time. Marcos didn't need a specific reason or time. As long as Enrique wasn't home, he'd show up and make Christina the victim of his depraved acts. Christina's fear and despair grew deeper over time. She had no idea how to break free from this hellish cycle, and she was growing increasingly concerned that Enrique would discover what was going on and abandon her. She became a soulless doll, controlled and dominated by Marcos, with no escape in her own home. After months of terror and despair, Christina realized she couldn't take Marcos's abuse. 
Christina began to believe that her father-in-law's death was the only way out. But then another thought occurred to her. Why should she suffer? Why should she keep living like a soulless doll, controlled by an evil man? Christina decided it was time for her to break free from this hellish cycle. She refused to let Marcos continue to humiliate and control her life. Christina began to plot her course of action. She knew she needed to act quickly and decisively because a moment's hesitation could cost her the only chance to escape this hell. Christina hid a sharp knife under her pillow in her bedroom, anticipating the inevitable moment. One morning, Enrique left for work early again, leaving Christina alone with Marco. Marcos took advantage of the opportunity, as he always does. He entered Christina's bedroom, where she sat on the bed, her eyes worn out and desperate. Marcos approached her again, displaying his usual disgust and depraved behavior. He began demanding that she perform the act she had been subjected to all along. Christina, despite her fear, maintained her composure, waiting for the right moment to act. As Marcos began to commit his depraved acts, Christina realized she had a chance. Her hands slid silently under the pillow, gripping the knife she had prepared ahead of time. In an instant, she pulled out the knife and stabbed Marcos in the body. For the first time, Christina's long-held determination and anger overcame her fear. Marcos, surprised by Christina's resistance, attempted to resist, but it was too late. Christina stabbed him repeatedly and relentlessly, channeling all of her anger and despair. Each stab was a release of all the pain she had felt. Blood poured from her hands, staining the bed and floor. In agony, Marcos collapsed right there. Life slowly left his body, and he died right where he had repeatedly committed depraved acts against Christina. Christina stood there, staring at Marcos's lifeless body and clutching the knife. She felt no remorse, only relief, as if she had finally escaped a nightmare. The blood on her hands, both on the floor and on the bed, indicated that she had finally broken free from Marcos's dominance and abuse. Christina panicked after killing Marcos, but she knew she couldn't handle the situation on her own. She immediately called Enrique and asked him to come home as soon as possible. When Enrique returned home and discovered his father's body in the bedroom, he was stunned and couldn't believe his eyes. Christina confessed, trembling, that she had killed her father-in-law and described the entire incident. She also accepted what her father-in-law had done to her. She also took her father-in-law's phone and opened the pictures he had taken of her being humiliated and threatened. Enrique, stunned and in pain, refused to blame his wife. Instead, he decided to help Christina deal with the consequences, no matter what happened next. The two began planning how to dispose of Marcos's body. Enrique removed a large tarp from the shed and, together with Christina, moved Marcos's body outside to a hidden corner of the garden. That night, Enrique began digging a deep hole to bury their terrible secret. Christina stood there, silently watching, full of regret and fear. She never imagined her life would turn out this bad, but there was no turning back. After digging the hole, Enrique and Christina laid Marcos's body down, covered it with dirt, and planted a large tree on top of it. After finishing the burial, the two returned to the house, attempting to erase all evidence of the incident. Enrique tidying up the bedroom, clearing away the blood, and eliminating any evidence that could aid in their prosecution. Christina, on the other hand, burned her bloody clothes, as well as any evidence of the crime. Enrique and Christina sat in the living room, exhausted and silent, after cleaning up everything. They knew they had to play it off, but the haunting and guilt would last forever. Over time, it seemed that they had managed to conceal the entire incident. Enrique and Cristina continued their daily lives, attempting to appear as normal as possible. Enrique told acquaintances and colleagues that his father had gone on a long trip, which Cristina had to repeat whenever anyone asked about Marcos. However, a month later, Marcos's daughter and children became concerned when they were unable to contact him. Eva and Antonio, who had grown suspicious, decided to go to Enrique's house and investigate. When they arrived, they noticed several anomalies, including Marcos's personal belongings, which were still intact, unlike someone who had traveled long distances. Eva and Antonio questioned Enrique and Cristina, 
but both insisted that Marcos had traveled alone. However, Eva's suspicions grew, especially when she couldn't believe her father had vanished with no contact. Eva was finally unable to bear the anxiety and decided to report Marcos's disappearance to the police. The police started their investigation and quickly arrived at Enrique and Cristina's house to inspect it. At first, Enrique and Cristina tried to remain calm while providing the information they had agreed on. However, the investigators were not fooled. They conducted a thorough search of the entire house and surrounding area, ensuring no detail was overlooked. Eventually, they found freshly dug soil in the back garden, near a newly planted large tree. When the police dug it up, they were horrified to find Marcos's body. Enrique and Cristina were arrested immediately. Investigators forced Enrique and Cristina to confess everything at the police station in front of irrefutable evidence. Cristina explained her long history of abuse and why she killed Marcos in desperation. Enrique also admitted that he helped his wife cover up the crime. Cristina and Enrique's trial began in late 2012 and received widespread media coverage. Enrique was accused of concealing a crime and complicity in hiding a body, while Cristina was accused of murder. Reporters, friends, and the victim's family crowded the courtroom. Christina appeared remorseful and miserable throughout the trial. She told the court that Marcos had been abusing and threatening her for a long time. She described in detail what had happened, beginning with Marcos drugging her and repeatedly humiliating her until she decided to kill him to free herself. Christina's defense attorney attempted to demonstrate that her actions were the result of a long-term mental crisis and an act of self-defense in a desperate situation. Enrique admitted with a painful expression, that he knew what Christina had gone through after killing Marcos. He testified that he chose to help his wife hide the body and cover up the crime out of love and loyalty for her, despite knowing it was wrong. However, the prosecutor emphasized that, despite Christina's deplorable circumstances, her murder was a serious crime. They also claimed that instead of reporting the crime to police, Enrique chose to conceal it, making him an accomplice. In the end, the court sentenced Cristina to 25 years in prison for murder and Enrique to five years for concealing the crime and complicity in hiding the body. Although the court deemed the verdict fair, the case left a lasting impression on the public's perception of the darkness and tragedy of family relationships. After Cristina and Enrique's case, the community and those involved will carry its memories. This is a heartbreaking story about abuse, desperation, and the consequences of making decisions during a crisis. Despite the legal resolution, this tragedy serves as a reminder of the complexities and darkness that can lurk in family relationships, which should be the safest place to lean. Thank you for being with us through this tragic case. We hope that by reading each case, you will not only learn more about the legal aspects but also discover the life lessons hidden behind each event.